welcome to Regarding Men, a place where we hold men in high regard. And I'm here today with my two favorite men advocates, Paul Elam of paulelam.com and Janice Fiamingo of the Janice Fiamingo Files. And we're going to talk about sex dolls today. You know, we talked about sex dolls not too long ago, but we talked about it as far as men go. Today, we're going to talk about the other side, sex dolls for women. And let's play a little clip here that'll give you a, an introduction of what we're going to talk about. So what do you think of that? Gracious goodness, she looks like she's having a great time caressing a dead body, right? Oh, oh boy, and you'll know why I say that in just a minute. But you know, this is an article from a, a crazy website, and the article is called "The Ultimate Pleasure Experience: Male Love Robots Could Replace Men for Good." Well, I, I'd like to change that and say "The Ultimate Pleasure Experience: Male Love Robots Men Are Good." But you know, it's that's <laughs> just me. Anyway, this article is not really about sex robots. It's not really about pleasing women. It's about anti-male stuff. I mean, there's 11 paragraphs, guys, in this, this little article, 11 paragraphs, two of which are like one sentence long. But out of those 11, five are anti-male stuff. It's all about how men, blah, blah, blah. Listen to this. Using this doll is supposed to make you have no further use for biological males. Huh? How about another one? With a name like the ultimate pleasure experience, this robot is designed to render real life males obsolete. This is great news for the women and not so much for the men. And it goes on and on. I think there's five little sections like that where they just, they're just tearing down men. It's not really about women and their enjoyment from this potential sex robot. Like we had with the, when we talked about the men, it wasn't about women are going to suffer. It was about the, it was about the sex dolls and the men who enjoyed them and how they treated them. And so it's very, very different, isn't it? And not only that, but this article is lying. The whole thing's based on a lie because they say sex robots, but guess what? These dolls don't move. No, 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 no. If you watch the little video that's in the, uh, in the article, it's a vice video. And at one point, uh, they asked the doll maker, um, can these dolls do doggy style? <laughs> and the doll maker came back and said, well, yes, they can do doggy style, but you have to do all the work. In other words, this doll ain't moving. It's just sitting there. You know, so that's one thing. And the next thing is this article right off the bat says, with this robot, you'll have very little to worry about as far as your user experience goes. For instance, battery recharges should become a thing of the past. <laughs> so they're implying that batteries are involved, but guess what? None of these robots move and there are no batteries. I think, I think maybe Tom, what they're implying there is that they won't, won't have to recharge the batteries in their vibrators anymore. Okay. Because uh, right. that may be, you oh, may I be never, right about that, I but still that. they're calling it robots as if it has, I mean, robots, you think right. of robots, something that moves these dolls don't move and the other thing oy, they said that means it should do as a real man would do in many things you can even engage in verbal communication <laughs> well guess what you can talk to the doll but the doll ain't talking back to you <laughs> so this article is filled with lies it's anti-male it's filled with lies what do you guys think of all this mess I can't imagine giving a damn less. <laughs> to be honest with you, it's like one. How long have we known that virtually every woman, woman in the Western and probably Eastern worlds has a vibrator tucked under the bed or in the drawer, in the bedside table? That, that this is a, this is a sexual aid for women that's been going. And you know what? Men never cared about that. Right, and they actually move. Yes, well, uh, they actually yes, they actually move. They actually do something. Yes. Um, but what I got from this article is that it was somehow written as a threat. Yes, yes. You better straighten up and fly right, man, because we can replace you with silicon. Well, 
fine. Let me know when that love ball earns a fucking paycheck. Uh, <laughs> when it pays for dinner. Um, when it talks back. When it does anything. This is really, and I don't bemoan this. I mean, I don't begrudge women uh, having their sexual aids. I think right. it's fantastic. Right. Uh, you know, each his own and, and everybody's individual freedom. Um, it's a wonderful thing. But let's talk about what it is. When you boil down to this, this is a dildo surrounded by 108 pounds of silicone. That's what, that's what it is. And you can't, well, you might be able to hide it under the bed if you've got a, a large cap there under the bed. You're not going to put it in the drawer. It's not going to be near as convenient as, as the vibrator. Uh, but this this whole premise that these are somehow a threat to men because like men these days are fuck that replace me please yeah, really? talk to the fucking oh, love doll God. you can have one i i sanction this in the name of our relationship please get one and then moan and nag to it mommy <laughs> yeah. mommy what's that in the bed <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah, I mean, I have to admit, I was I was fooled. I read this and I thought, uh, oh, wow, um, I had no idea that robots had developed to this point. That's how, how gullible I am. And then I, wait a minute, they have not. I know they haven't. I mean, we just talked to a, a maker of, of love dolls and he addressed the very limited technology, um, robot technology that is out there. There's no way you can have a robot that's pro programmed to carry on conversations with their girlfriends and, you know, do all these various things and respond to the girl's every emotional, intellectual and sexual need. I mean, so yeah, I finally realized I was going to ask you guys, where, you know, hmm, what kind of technology can produce such a doll? And then I finally realized, okay, yes, this is a, I don't know what you'd call it. A, a, it's not a satire, um, a thought experiment, but basically what you've just said, it's a, it's a threat, I guess. It, hate you know, it, it's a hate piece, a hate piece masquerading as a, as a, I don't know, as some kind of wish fulfillment or, or prediction piece saying, this is what every woman supposedly wants and look out guys, because you're going to be replaced one right. of these days. And so I'm going to outline all the ways that you could easily be replaced and how, how much happier women would be, I suppose. I mean, it, yeah, it, it's just hatred says things like, um, so ladies, the love life you have always wanted is finally here. The creators of this doll were driven by the need to create a product that would outperform real life males and make women choose them as lovers over blood and flesh males. The idea, of course, is that blood and flesh males have completely failed to satisfy women. Uh, they're they're inadequate in so many ways, and she goes on. So for the guys out there who are not putting enough effort in this aspect of their relationships, there's now a need to take your game up a notch before a robot replacement gets you kicked to the curb. So that's really the uh, idea of it, I suppose. And that's of it. course, you know, I, I thought to myself, what would a article be like written in some kind of mainstream popular magazine threatening women that they had better get their game up a notch or they were going to be kicked to the curb by you know female yeah, uh, this sex all does robots. everything the man wants yeah yeah ladies you, know, you can <laughs> come on you need to step up your game here yeah you better start, doing start. What he wants Exactly. Better start fill it, fulfilling your man's every whim, every need, etc. Well, of course, we know what the feminists would have to say about such a such an article. And, you know, it wouldn't be written in this tone of voice, because right. the thing to note, as you did, Tom, about this article is that it is, it's nasty. It so is. It's, it's a it hateful really article. And as you said, most of it really is about 
all the ways that men are inadequate and men have failed women, it's not really about what women would gain from a, a robot sex doll if there were such a thing. Yeah, and so it, so yeah, it's just a threat. That's that's what it is. And as you said, we we talked to a maker of sex dolls, and it wasn't about men's hatred of women. It wasn't an excuse to bash women over the head by being inadequate sexual partners or anything like that. It was about some men's legitimate need for this doll or desire for this doll and what they can offer to men. A uh, very different kind of attitude. Yes. I've got to dissent a little bit, Janice, from, uh, from what you said. Uh, <laughs> uh, I don't know that, uh, you know, we do have the technology for conversation. Uh, uh, a, a lot of, if you could get a male doll to say, yes, dear, um, <laughs> yes, dear. it would satisfy <laughs> a pretty good cross-section of women out there <laughs> yeah. in terms mm -hmm. of what constitutes conversation. And I think we <laughs> it's important to look at what are we really replacing here? With, when a man buys a sex doll, what is he replacing? He's replacing sex. Yeah. When a, uh, and other than that, I mean, it's pretty familiar. She just sort of sits there and doesn't do anything. Um, and so that might be uh, on par for uh, making a man satisfied. But what are women really doing with this? I mean, there is a market for this. And there are women seeking them out, uh, at least according to that video. So I'm, I'm just wondering, what is it that women, are they really just looking for a, a super advanced dildo? Or are they looking for emotional connection? Because the, both the article and the video seem to be trying to sell that. I, I don't know, Paul. I think they're selling the idea that there's something wrong with men. And they're selling this, this unbalanced viewpoint of it's all the guy's problem. You're fine the way you are. You know, you just need someone who's right. And this robot it, is going to be so much better than these guys who are always wrong. You know, there were other articles on the internet too about this kind of thing. Well, that, was, that was the writer. I'm curious about the actual market though. And the, 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 what the, probably what the makers would say, because it was obvious from that. And I recommend watching the video. It's fairly interesting. And it shows that the, the makers of these robots have a pretty close connection to their customers. A lot of communication mm -hmm. with them. Yeah, they have to. And, and so I would, I would just wonder what women who are going after these products, my guess is just, it's a super advanced sex toy. Um, uh, I don't see anybody seriously trying to uh, replace an emotional connection. Although right. when we talked to Phil Bass, he talked about having that emotional connection. Yes. And how the men start treating the dolls a in a very special did. way. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. yeah. That's a good point. And I wonder about that because, you know, um, if, we know that deer, for instance, when you put models of deer or elk in the field for hunters, bucks will come up and try to mate with them. Um, and I wonder if that's just something embedded in the male psyche that just the imagery is enough to mm -hmm. trigger huh. us in these emotional caretaking or mating responses and everything huh. that goes with it. And, and whether or not is that true for women? Yeah, you well, would think it would be less a, true. I think it would be far less true. I mean, it's yeah. a huge question and I wouldn't claim to have any expertise whatsoever in the matter. So that's a big, big uh, warning before I'm about to now launch into <laughs> my theory. But uh, <laughs> I mean, yeah, I just, I don't think that at least from a common sense observation of how men relate to women's bodies and how women relate to men's bodies, I don't see think you could say there's any equivalence whatsoever. Mm -hmm. And of course, you know, if this kind of article were being written by a feminist or even by like any woman, I would say nearly any woman about men's interest in sex dolls or in even a sex robot, uh, you know, a female sex robot, it would be all about, you know, this is objectification, 
you know, we've heard this so many right. times. This is what men do. Women, w- women are, are compartmentalized. Their bodies are dehumanized by men. Men fetishize certain aspects of women's bodies. This is all bad. You know, this has bad results. It leads to exploitation and abuse, etc. But the actual fact seems to be the opposite, that rather than objectifying women's bodies, as is claimed so many times, what men do is, is you know, adulate, uh, absolutely fall in love with women's bodies in a way that I really don't think men do, or sorry, women do with right, men. Right. That, that, that uh, I remember somebody writing to me and, and telling me that in his opinion, many men love women's bodies more than they love their own minds, that they're hmm. willing to die for these bodies. They're willing to sacrifice themselves Mm. for for how much they love these bodies. And of course, this all goes back to the connection that that male children have with their mother's body. This is the body that they came from, that nurtured them, that represented all the source of love and caring and protection and security for them. And so that's bound to be a very, very different kind of relationship than what women have to male bodies where they never had that nurturing. And women are quite willing, we know, as a group, women are quite willing to send men as a group off to war with the full realization that those bodies can be ripped to shreds on the battlefield. That is not something that men as a group have ever been willing to do with women. Men who do harm women's bodies are not typical. They are, you know, they are total outriders hated by other men. Uh, So, so yeah, the, the, um, I think the response of men to the female form is a completely different one and it yes. is much more intense and it is a response. It's a, it's a loving response, not yes. a, not a killing, objectifying, deadening response. So, um, so I don't, I don't see there being a market. It would be very interesting to find out whether there's much of a market um, for male sex dolls for women. Did we ask Phil Bass that when, when, no, I don't um, think so. I, don't I think, think it we just up. didn't it, come up. Right, yeah. we're talking about other dolls. It did come up in the video, however, uh, ab- about the markets and who was buying and where from. One of the interesting things in the video that came up, which was also a, a, a sort of a, a basket of bullshit, was they asked the woman who was the owner of this business, where did most of their customers come from? And she said, most of our customers come from Texas, Michigan, and Minnesota and saying because they're republican states where you where it's not okay to have sexual fun oh well, yeah last i checked minnesota and michigan were as blue as it gets i mean trump carried michigan but it's a historically democrat state and minnesota trump didn't even win uh it was blue going way back obama and clinton and era so she just totally made up <laughs> This puritanical narrative uh, that explains, you know, why so much of their business is from those areas, which, of course, as a business person, that makes me think, well, you idiot, you're, you're creating, you're making up a narrative about your clients when you should be studying facts about them, because that's going to help your business. Yes. Um, I mean, I just can't imagine that there is anything equivalent in terms of market amongst women for these for these dolls uh you know what just from supply and demand they're like they're like eight ten thousand dollars too i mean Mm -hmm. and And more you can have a vibrator considerably cheaper yeah much and uh, yeah i I just uh yeah well i mean i'd I'd be interested to know for sure i can't see women um, many women forking out eight thousand dollars for for a doll, I, I just I just can't, uh, and you know, but but fine, you know, like if they want to, you know, the the implication in this article, and I think if any uh, feminist, particularly any feminist inspired woman, wrote about this subject or thought about this subject, the implication would be that um, men are going to be upset, you know, men are men are going to be jealous, they're going to feel uneasy. 
because of course the standard narrative is that men want to control women's sexuality. We've heard that from day one in the, in the feminist movement. Or is that a rich piece of projection? Exactly. It's pure <laughs> projection. I mean, this whole article is fascinating because it is pure projection. It's all about supposedly rubbing men's nose in the fact that one day women won't need them sexually, so they better step up their game. Yes. I'm sure you could show this article to 100 men and say, you know, are you threatened by this? And they'd say, no way. Like, unless it's right. the woman I'm interested in, the woman that I want to love and I want to love me. I mean, obviously, I think the guy would be upset if she rejected him for a doll. But if it's women in general, more power to them. Guys don't care. It's women who get upset at the idea that men might be able to get sexual pleasure outside of the realm of real flesh and blood, blood women because it's women who want to control male access. And so it freaks them out that men might be able to buy dolls and go on with their life and have that sexual release and not be dependent on pleasing a woman. And so that's why we get all these sanctimonious and, and pejorative condemnatory articles about how this is damaging to women somehow if a man buys a doll. Right. Um, men don't care that they're, they're fine with this sort of thing. And, you know, and, and it's just, it's nonsense to, to, for this person, Mariah Smith, to suggest that what women want in a, in a boyfriend is this, you know, is solely this, this sort of this lover. And, you know, there's a paragraph about how, you know, in, in the future, these robots are gonna be programmed with personalities and, and traits and characteristics, specially designed to meet the woman's emotional needs and all this sort of thing. Yeah, right, you know, when, the, when there's a, 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 I don't know, a sound downstairs in the middle of the night. That's <laughs> in the is, robot. Is the is the doll send gonna the go doll, down? No, send the doll. Yeah, is the doll gonna go <laughs> down doll, and, and and deal with it? Yeah, is the is the doll gonna or the robot even? Okay, let's let's imagine this robot. Is the robot gonna take the woman out for dinner and pay for the dinner? Is the robot gonna drive you to work in his car that he paid for? <laughs> I mean, you know, is the robot gonna kill the spider in the bathtub? And uh, <laughs> I mean, you know, like women expect all sorts of things often involving a big paycheck that is then going to be lavished on that woman. And that's not gonna be satisfied with any robot, robot, no matter how sophisticated that robot might in some, you know, utopian future be programmed to be. So I think there's a, a, not only an incredible amount of projection going on here, about what men want and what women want. But there's also a lot of self-delusion about what women use men for. And this notion that yes, women are just like men and so we can demand the fulfillment of our sexual needs. No, 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 it's way more complicated than that. And it's actually, um, you know, the, the reality of what women look for in men is a lot more embarrassing for women because sometimes mm. it involves a lot of exploitation and naked greed. Mm. Yes. I'd, I'd like to explore a little bit more too about what you said about men's reaction to this, which I, I find really interesting, the difference between what this writer perceived men's reaction would be <laughs> and what their actual reaction. You take, for instance, lesbianism, uh, which is ultimately a rejection of men sexually uh, in preference for women. So what do men do with that? They eroticize it and turning it into, turn it into porn. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're not like, oh no, don't do that. They're like, yeah, I wanna watch. Exactly, <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, and do the same thing if, with voyeuristic tendencies with women masturbating. And I could imagine that you could, you could probably start a genre of porn uh, using women and sex dolls and men would buy it. Yes, uh, yes. Yeah. Their, their objections to this don't exist. As a matter of fact, and look at, looking at it on the emotional side, I can almost hear a couple of million husbands getting out their checkbooks and saying, how much? <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, <laughs> yeah, the, the, the inferences that this woman draws about what men see in this and what their likely reaction to it is, is absolutely just out of, unplugged entirely from any mm -hmm. sort of reality. Yeah. Um, it, I just find that fascinating and hysterical. It is. It's hilarious. I mean, you're exactly right. And, and again, like the narrative is always so blind to reality because your example of lesbianism, it's always this notion that, you know, this is the ultimate rejection of male power. And that this really gets to you know the core of what men uh, desire from women and how they need to exert yeah. their control and subjugate women. And everything. Yeah, men are like, I love lesbians, you know, <laughs> wow, me, you know, like yeah, they would like to have a threesome. But if that's not if that's not uh, forthcoming, they're not threatened. They're not angry about it. They're they're titillated and interested. It couldn't be further from the truth of the attitude of men towards female sexuality. <laughs> and the other underlying piece is you should get your needs met, lady, without making any effort. It shouldn't be anything yeah. you have to do. It should just right. be something that he has to change. Yeah. And yeah. that's the kind of attitude that has completely screwed up our relationships. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because it's one-sided. It's lopsided. It's like, he needs to change all the time. No, you both need to work together to figure it out instead of running and getting a robot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's, yeah, and it's explicitly said in the article. Um, I, I thought it was hilarious in one of the one-sentence paragraphs. I mean, maybe I'm making too much of this article, reading too oh, much into it, but I love this 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 statement. Some upsides to using these dolls, our author tells us, include the fact that women don't have to put in as much effort into <laughs> making themselves... Looking like a true like, woman. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> and, and this is making themselves likable. Right. They right. work with their real life partner. Yeah, that's a real problem for women. They're working so hard to make themselves <laughs> likable yeah. these days, aren't they? Yeah, yeah a lot I of men can attest to that. Too much. Oh, God. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I, and, and, you know, the, the anger, it, it, like you just, you can't, uh, I mean, it, it's, it's, it's startling to me how much anger, you know, comes off the page in articles like this. Yep. It, it, you know, she, she imagines, I think, that she's writing something really bold and saucy and it's gonna make men feel uncomfortable and it's going to be sort of erotically uh, engaging for women thinking about this. But, you know, it just comes back to, um, you know, making men, where, where was it about making men obsolete? Uh, I can't right. find it now, um, but, uh, yeah, we know. Oh, we'll that, have no, that, no, that is predictable. No further. <laughs> I can't no, find it either. <laughs> <laughs> no further use for biological males. Well, right. yeah, okay, right. sure. Let's imagine a world in which there aren't biological males. Let's imagine such a society is a pretty dark place. The last thing you'll long. be worrying about. Yeah, you won't be worrying about your sex doll because <laughs> you, you know you'll you'll be starving to death and there, you won't have any electricity in your home and and you won't have clean running water and you won't have any food or anything else. So, I mean, you know, it's just like this, this vicious fantasy that, that just keeps bubbling to the surface. Anytime you have a woman who imagines that she's speaking as a feminist, making some sort of really courageous and risky kind of point in her narrative, um, you know, it, it, it's, it's shocking how once it women is. have given free reign to their hatred, it seems to just keep stoking more hatred, all in the guise of empowerment. But ugh, it's, and, and I really honestly cannot imagine, you know, for all the talk about, oh, man, men are so angry at women and men are expressing hatred, blah, blah, blah. I mean, like, you know, it's just not the kind of thing that men would sit around fantasizing about with other men. It, you know, I, I like your term vicious fantasy. That is just perfect it should be coined that's what it is it's a been it's sexuality expressed through vindictiveness that's yeah. it yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 there's and no eroticism God, here man, at all how sick is that shit how sick is that yeah. that that even your 
ultimately your, your sexual fantasies revolve around punishing half yeah. the population. Mm -hmm. That's like, man, girl. <laughs> I know, it is, it's out. really, really weird. Like there's nothing sexual in this thing at all. There isn't. And it isn't right. because she doesn't want to, you know, get into too many details or anything. It's because she literally, what she thinks of as erotic is just based on nastiness. And it's that, and like, it is projection and it's imagining how angry and, and, um, hurt all these men are going to be reading about this oh gee this is good oh no this is going to happen who knows maybe in 10 years or something i'm going to be replaced when as you both have said and my reaction like, was oh boy there's a video <laughs> <laughs> hey let's see this hmm, interesting yeah you know, i mean that that's it and and yeah i mean i don't know yeah there's like a whole there's, there's a whole uh, psychological treatise to be written about why that is when a woman is supposedly given free reign to imagine this perfect sexual universe, you know, some sort of utopian future in which every uh, need is met, sexual and otherwise, all she can do is vent spleen at men and try yes. to make men feel insecure. Right. It, yeah, it's really, it's really weird. Yep. It tells you a lot about her. Sure does. Yeah. And and there's a market for this kind of writing. It doesn't. Yes, matter. absolutely. I'm sure she got plenty of views on that article. <clears throat> she got sucked up. The, and there's other articles that are on the net like this. One of them says, sick of men, this male love robot could replace them. Mm -hmm. That's the attitude. That's right. the attitude. Sick of yes. men. They're the and problem. They are sick of men. They're, You're they're not the problem. problem. He's they the problem. Are. This could solve your problem, and then you'd feel all better. Oh, bullshit. All you need to do is spend eight or ten grand on this <laughs> chunk of silicone, and, and you'll be happy. And they're buying that. Yep. Um, fine by me. And the buying it is ruining our relationships, you know? Yeah, unfortunately. Yeah. We're inflating women by the day inflating 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 stoking yeah. resentment no pun intended yeah <laughs> <laughs> good point yeah. <laughs> well it's yeah it's a it's it's well it's a very telling article and, and, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah if you guys but, want to check it out there's links below well there yeah, are it's, it's worth by the way it. the video on that has 65 million views right yeah i saw that it's <laughs> like are you kidding me 65 million no this is you know so that this is a fascinating topic it, yes, it, it is. really is because there is an element of replacing that's going on here with the progression of this technology and it's to me kind of sad I, I I don't think in the end that it's going to really make that huge of an impact on anything. Maybe a thousand years from now, when they can actually replicate uh, a human being mechanically, uh, that they'll have different challenges along with that. But mostly, this is a a just a sort of a fascinating, titillating topic uh, that a lot of people, as we see in view counts on videos on this subject, they're huge. Yes. Uh, People want to know about it. There's an interest in it. Uh, I think a lot of that is sort of a morbid interest too. Sure. Yeah, it's a morbid. Mm -hmm. interest. And again, like I, maybe I, I, I can be accused of sort of um, idolizing or, or whitewashing the male perspective and, and presenting in a particularly unsympathetic way the, the, the female perspective. But again, I, I do think that when you talk to guys about this issue of replacing the opposite sex guys tend to have a pretty different response yeah. from the sort of response we see here most of them would say it's not that i just hate women it's either i have not been able to have a relationship because there was like just way too much horrific drama involved or there was way too much abuse and exploitation or i just found it um, too dangerous for per personally, 
um, in terms of my financial well-being, my securities, the, my ability to carry on with my business. Like guys have got real reasons why they regretfully, but with a practical aim in, in mind, turn away from women. This is just pure spite. This is all fantasy about, oh, I could finally be treated in the way that I deserve to be treated. Of course, they'll say, oh, no, no, it's because of abuse, et cetera, et cetera. But none of that is mentioned here. It's, it's all based on a um, f uh, feminist-inspired perception that men, as they are now, deserve to be left behind. And that oh, only if they could make themselves 100% compliant with every woman's whim and momentary desire, could they maybe be allowed back into human society? It's, yeah. uh, it's an ideological rejection of men, which is very different from what men express when they talk about why they have rejected women. So yeah, I, um, yeah, I, I don't know. It's, uh, it's, we're, we're at a really weird cultural impasse, it seems yes. to me. Yes. Strange days indeed. Yeah. And I loved your point, Janice, about the way men tend to idealize the female body. I think that's so true. And I know a lot less about the way women deal with men's bodies, but I think it's very different. I think that's a good point. And it's instructive. You know, when, when yes. you look at that, what Janice talked about, about men idealizing the bodies and pampering and nurturing these yes. girls. Yes, it's so true. Like, that is an opportunity, I think, for men to say, just wait, hold on here a second. What are your priorities? Uh, because the fact of the matter is, is that pampering and caretaking of women hasn't worked out especially well for men. No, not now. No. It, it hasn't. It, it works out to their detriment in many cases. Now, the good news is with a, a, a love doll, sex doll, whatever you want to call it, there's once you get over the initial expense, and I guess some of these guys buy lingerie and, and other things for these dolls, but they're probably a lot cheaper maintenance, <laughs> maintenance than an actual woman. Um, uh, yeah, Especially, and, and she, the doll's not going to leave and demand to be supported for the next 10 years <laughs> or the rest of her life and be, uh, you know, affirmed by the court in, in the same. And then you don't have <laughs> what you had from the woman in the first place. So. Yeah, and that's why they won't catch on that strongly for women because mm -hmm. in the cost benefit examination, um, men produce so much more for women yeah. than than dolls ever could or would. Yeah, right. and the other way around for men, it's a it's a it is a cost effective uh, decision. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, unfortunately so. Yeah. But I think you'll always have a much bigger market for men uh, for women dolls. Yes. than the other way around. Yeah. Uh, time may prove me wrong. Doubtful. I don't mm -hmm. think so. I think you're right. I don't think so. Yeah. No. Are we done? I think we are. Hmm. <laughs> 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 well. <laughs> well. I guess we'll I end by. <laughs> no, well, no, we, well, there's one other thing we haven't oh. said. Just a reminder of everybody that regarding men is where red pill isolation comes to die. And it is dying a, a quick death there. You guys come and join us. <laughs> Regardingmen.com slash join us. Or, I'm sorry, regardingmen.com slash join. Yeah. yeah. Slash join. Slash join. Yeah. And for five bucks because a month. Because red pill isolation is dying a very quick death every day of the week there. And it is a beautiful thing to watch. Yeah. And That's men are loving it. So good stuff. But on that note, men are good. <laughs> oh, wow. That seemed almost rehearsed. <laughs> no, we, should, we should practice that sometime. <laughs> <laughs> all right. We'll see okay. you all. You take care. Take care. Bye-bye. 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 <laughs>